This one's going to start off with the image compression and associating the profile image to the user we're logged in on so that every time you come in, you see the image. Um, if you remember the last time we were doing this, we were picking a profile image and automatically sending that over to Xano, which I'll give you a quick view of right now. Um, do a refresh. Um, you'll notice this is a new refresh button they've added, which is handy. We don't have to do a refresh up here anymore. And then as soon as that uploads, there it is. So this is what we had going last time. What we are going to do this time, get rid of the message there, is from AppGyver, we're going to, uh, from the profile screen that we're in right now and on the image component, we're going to add some uh, flow function flow functions maybe, but at least one that is going to be for um, compressing the image so that it doesn't take so much space. Because right now, I think from the iPhone, I'm probably somewhere between six and eight meg for each image uploaded. And since it's just a profile picture, that doesn't really seem worth the space. Okay, so I think I already have this installed, but we will do a search out in the marketplace like we normally do. And there we go, so it's not installed yet. Uh, compress image, resize and compress. So we're gonna go ahead and install that flow function. And we've got resize and compress image. So here we are on a component tap of the image component. As you saw, we popped up the photo library. When you picked one, we set an app variable that is the uh, profile image path. And what we're going to do is connect that output of setting the app variable to be the input to the compress flow function. And then we'll connect the output of the compress flow function into convert to base 64. So really all we're doing is adding in the ability to make smaller the image coming out of that app variable. So let's come on over to our resize and compress. You can kind of take a quick look here. It allows you to set a compression uh, ratio or to just set the size of the image. Um, but before we do any of that, we do need to set the source image path, which is going to come from the output value of another node. Actually, that's not exactly true. We set a um, app variable. It is profile image path, so we're going to use that. So now this one has where the image lives, and as opposed to managing it via image quality, I've always been kind of a fan of getting a compression effect out of just changing the size. I think um, you'll see a lot of images, at least from an iPhone, are like 3,000 by 4,000 pixels. So we're going to just say that it's going to be a maximum height of 500 and a maximum width of 500. And it will keep the aspect ratio of whatever image you're using. And that may be about all there is to it. Um, there's a few things we'll notice. One is the obvious change in pixels or file size. The other is that um, the image should upload quicker. So let's give this a quick shot and see how close I got to making this work. We are going to upload an image and see if I actually have it coming from, you know what I might have done is I think I made a mistake in my flow function because where is, yeah, so here's a mistake, even though I got a little lazy. Uh, so the set app variable is setting um, profile image path. We are compressing the um, file at profile image path, but the um, media compression flow function creates a temporary file location, which you can see right in here. And so what I need to do is not use profile image path for my convert file to base 64, because that's just using the big image. I need to reset this to be output from another node um, and the resize compress and the path because that is a new path. And without that, I was just doing the same old image. 
Okay, and just to prove that real quick, now that I've fixed my problem, here's the image number 25. If I go into the API, and I'm gonna just call the media API, so that's for the media table, and I'm gonna pass in the ID, which was 25, and I'm gonna get back the image metadata. You'll see that I'm almost seven meg worth of data, and 3,800 by, or 3,000 by 4,000. So this is what it looks like before we compress it, so let's see what it looks like after we compress it. Okay. We're gonna do this again. We'll pick uh, the coffee cup so it's obvious. And if you'll notice, that actually came back quite a bit quicker. And just to prove that, since this one's 25, I will bet you, because they're in order, this is 26 for our new one. And if you see now, the size is uh, eight, 8K, as opposed to uh, seven meg. And here, it kept the aspect ratio because we set a maximum of 500 and 500. So it's got 375 by 500. And if I come back to the table and refresh, you'll see that we have our coffee picture there. Okay, so that's all well and good. We're now compressing an image, but what we also wanna do is associate um, the image that we upload here. We wanna associate that with the user so that every time we come into the app, it'll automatically load the profile picture. Right now we're just uploading pictures and we have no idea who they belong to. So we are going to, I'm gonna just clear out some of these newer ones so that we don't get a long list as we do testing. They're not associated to anything. So the work we're gonna do now is in Xano and we're gonna make some table changes. So let me go back to the databases, back to the database tables. What we want to do is in the user table, we want to add in a table reference. It's gonna to be to the media table. And at this point, every user, when we make some uh, changes here, every user will get an ID like 25 or 26 or 27 that is the image that is the profile image they uploaded but I'm gonna make two other changes that are unrelated but important. I have a couple of attribute fields that I saw in testing that are not set up correctly, meaning that if I change type on email, um, I wanna make sure, okay, I do have them changed right. These are not nullable, and there's a reason to have email and password not nullable. One is they can't be empty fields. You have to have an email and have to have a password to have an account. But if you um, currently with Xano, if you have them as nullable, meaning they can be emptied, there's some circumstances when you do an edit to the table where they'll get blanked out. And we don't want that to happen. And I'll kind of show you where that is when we get to it. Um, so now we're gonna go back to the APIs and I want to close out my debugger and we're going to go to the upload API because this is the API we're calling from AppGyver to upload that image into the media table. If you remember, this happened a few videos ago where you, we have um, a file type. It's not number, it's not um, text, it's file. And we're passing up that base64 image. It's got a variable name of content. And there is a utility function in Xano that creates the image file or the image variable from the file. And then that gets passed along in this uh, function stack as the variable image. So that is the actual profile image there. And look at there, I didn't clean up my testing. I'm gonna do that now. There we go. Okay, because that's what we're adding in. I, I can't cheat you and uh, just say that it works. So create image from file, this was here before, we get image and then we added that to the media table. That was here before, that's where we got our response. And now what we wanna do is after we've added the image to the media table, we wanna add a new database request to edit the user table. 
And the reason we're doing that is we're going to add a reference to that media in image upload into that image. So the field name, um, we have to find when we're doing an edit, we have to find the record, the user record in this case. And to do that, we are going to match on the ID. So the field name we want to match on is ID. And the field value, this one we haven't done this way before, but since we pass an authorization token every time, um, that authorization token had user ID encrypted into it. So that means that I can use that HTTP header authorization value that gets passed in as associating the ID. So now I'm looking for the user ID that's logged in in AppGyver to match up with a record <clears throat> in um, Xano's user table. And then this is the data that I want to update, which none of these, these can all stay as they are. But media ID, the new field that I created, I want to add in, scroll up here, for the variable, let's see, where are we at here? For the image upload variable in the second item in the function stack, I want to use that. And, <clears throat> pardon me, I want to send the ID in. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can actually use um, a get uh, function or filter, but the quicker and easier way is just to reference the variable dot ID. That's kind of a shorthand on how you can do that. I think I've done it both ways in some of my videos, but sometimes quicker is better. So as I was talking there, I forgot to change, which is, we'll just call it user item. Okay. So now if I were to run, and we will, the uh, app, I had to change nothing additional in AppGyver. And I think what we have here will end up showing me that these fields get, or one of them will, we're logged in as Steve. So this media ID should get filled in. So let's see what happens. Take you back over to the app. We are going to change the image. Uh, we'll go with that one. It should happen pretty quick, and it does. We're going to scroll back over to Xano, and we are going to refresh, and there it is. So just like that, we now have associated a nice compressed um, profile image to the user table. And so when I get the data back, which is the next thing I want to do,